The weapons charge reportedly stems from the fact that one of the guns authorities seized in their investigation into Stacy's disappearance is shorter than allowed by Illinois law. The firearm in question is an AR-15 semi-automatic assault rifle. Peterson claimed he legally owned the weapon as a police officer, and the law only pertains to civilians. We all need assault rifles, don't we? Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, well, on the phone is Drew Peterson's attorney, Joel Brodsky. Uh, he is calling in from Illinois. Joel, thanks for being with us today. What's the deal with this, what's the deal with this, uh, with, with this weapon? Why does he have this weapon? He's a, he's a SWAT team officer, and uh, you're allowed to have uh, two weapons, two SWAT weapons. One is issued by the department that was a, a basically a machine gun, a submachine gun. And the second one uh, you could buy for yourself as long as it was registered, and uh, that's this AR-15, uh, which is a civilian version of the M-16. And that's uh, what you owned and what was registered as a duty weapon with the Bollinger Police Department. Now, does that change because now, would, should we call him a citizen now? Hasn't he retired for, as a police officer? Hey, he's a retired police officer. That gives him, under federal law at least, some rights to carry a concealed weapon as a retired police officer. So he's not quite a no. civilian, but he has uh, he doesn't have arrest powers anymore. That's, that's for certain. So here's what we're all talking about, though. When you are somebody who has the, everybody's eyes are on you for possibly murdering your wife and possibly murdering your other wife, wouldn't you want to stay away from guns? Wouldn't you just want to have knives and guns as far away as possible from you? Well, no, I mean, that's, that's certainly one way of looking at it. The other way is that this is a, you know, expensive weapon, and he wanted to give them, give it, since he can't have them, uh, he wanted to have them given to his police officer's son, who can obviously make use of them. They just shouldn't sit collecting dust. Um, and, uh, you know, but I, I can understand that point of view. Uh, you know, he too said, uh, I think he said it on uh, one show where he gave an interview, that since he's no longer an officer, he really doesn't need to have guns. So. Joel, what do you think the point of this arrest is? I mean, my gosh, this goes back months and months. Why are we dealing with it now? Well, because I'm driving to court uh, this uh, this afternoon to get a co uh, court order, and I believe that that's what the judge uh, said left. I mean, he's going to order that the guns, uh, through his guns, be uh, turned over to his son, uh, Stephen who's their, their new owner, and I believe that for some reason, and I cannot fathom, the Illinois State Police seems to be obsessed with keeping these guns. Well, um, but again, what is the point of the hearing today? Is it about the guns, or do you think they're trying to trip him up on other things? Well, the hearing today is specifically re regarding who's going to keep possession of the guns uh, from now on, and uh, either it's going to be stay with the Illinois State Police or going to be turned over to Stephen. But the judge, last time we were in court a couple weeks ago, very strongly indicated that he was intending to give them to Stephen, which is why I believe the timing of the charges yeah. in, uh, in bringing them today, so uh, or yesterday. So. All right, let's bring in former judge and district attorney Janine Pirro and also criminal defense attorney Randy Spencer. Janine, what are your thoughts on this? Um, this guy has an illegal assault rifle, an AR-15 under state and federal law, and he's no different than anyone else. And for him to claim that maybe there's an exemption because I'm a police officer, hogwash. The bottom line is he had an MP5 that was his SWAT team rifle in addition to another gun that was registered with the department. He had an illegally sawed-off shotgun. And what's amazing here is he's not charged with possession. He's charged with use. They've got something up their sleeves on this one. Remy. I, I don't see how we can say that Drew Peterson is not like everyone else. He's not like everyone else. He's got the media spotlight on him. The police think that he's involved in the death of his third wife, the disappearance of his fourth wife, and they are manipulating a highly regulated area of the law on a technicality to arrest him. You're going to try to harass him? is the same kind of weapon that drug dealers use, a technicality? He, let's be clear. This is not a gun that has a sawed-off shotgun. The, the whole purpose of the law is to protect people from concealing weapons so that they commit they don't commit crimes. Right. That's not what happened here. He had it when he was a police officer. They took these guns in November of 2007. Why did they wait all of these months if they were such because a serious crime? Because the guns were safely in police possession and the risk is that if a judge gives it back, they're giving back an illegal gun. But they're not giving back their gun. I mean, that's what Mr. Brodsky just said. They're not giving back the gun to Mr. Peterson. They're giving it to his son. It's a lawful possession no, it of the gun. No, it's an illegal gun. It is, they can't give it to anyone.
one. It's illegal. That's why they filed the charge. It is per se illegal. He can't use any excuse. And you know what? Whether the spotlight's on him or not, the bottom line is he's got to follow the law like every other. This is going to be a good hearing today. We'll keep an eye on it for all of you, Joel. Thank you for calling in from the road.